All right, welcome everyone. In this video, we're doing a 16.2 style problem. This is from spring 2016. We got a nice problem here. So, all right, let's get to it. Our goal is to calculate out this line integral, and we're on the line segment from the point 100 to the point 412. All right, so this is one of the notations that we can receive a line integral information in. So we need to remember how do we read this thing? How do we figure out what is our vector field? What is our curve? So, okay, our vector field, remember this is given P, Q, and R. So this Z squared, that's our first component. So let me go ahead and write it down here. Z squared is my first component. Q, X squared is my second component, and R, Y squared, that's my third component. So this notation means that we're using, we're considering the vector field Z squared, X squared, Y squared. So there's our vector field. Now let's go ahead and figure out our curve, right? So we're going to parametrize our curve, and again, this is a line segment from the point 100 to the point 412. So in order to set up a parameterization for this line segment, I start at the point 100, and then a line segment, right, we're going to have times t times some vector, and this is kind of how many steps that I take in order to get from this point to this point. So in the x component, I take, let's see, 1 goes to 4, I must have taken 3 steps, 0 goes to 1, I must have taken 1 step, 0 goes to 2, I must have taken 2 steps. Let's go ahead and use our scalar multiplication and vector addition to simplify this down, so 1 plus t times 3, so I'm just going to write 1 plus 3t. 0 plus t times 1, so that's going to be just 1t. And 0 plus t times 2, that's just going to be 2t. So there's my parameterization. Remember that for line segments, we always parameterize from t equals 0 to 1, or at least that's the most standard way. And of course, you can double check. If you plug in 0, do you get out the point 100? Absolutely. If you plug in 1, do you get out the point 412? All right, well, let's check. Let's plug in 1. I'd get 3 plus 1. That'd be 4. Good. I'd get t is 1. Great. And 2t. That's going to be 2. Great. So I get the point 412. So we want to stop there. All right, so now let's actually do the computation. Remember, this is fine notation for the line integral, but when I actually go to calculate out line integrals, I like to switch the notation to what I've called the working definition. So this is going to be the integral of f dot r prime of t dt. So this is really my working definition here. Let's go ahead and start plugging some stuff in. So our f, that's going to be the vector field z squared, x squared, y squared, and then I need r prime of t. Well, I have r of t, so I can calculate out r prime fairly quickly. Let's just do this in line here. So if I take the derivative of the x component, I'm going to get 3. If I take the derivative of the y component, I'm going to get 1. If I take the derivative of the z component, I'm going to get 2. dt. What are my bounds? Well, t ranges from 0 to 1. Remember, this is my t integral, so I'm going to go from 0 to 1. And finally, before I actually get computing here, again, I have a t integral. I don't really like the fact that I have z's and x's and y's. I would like to have all t's. Luckily, our parameterization here gives us a way to swap some stuff in, right? This is the x, here is the y, and here is the z. So let's go ahead and switch those in. So everywhere I see a z, I'm going to put a 2t. So let's see, 2t squared, so that's going to be 2 squared, and t squared, that's going to be... 4t squared altogether. x squared. Uh, this one, I'm not going to try to foil this out in my head. I'll just write x 1 plus 3t and square that. And then finally, y squared. That's going to be t squared. All right, and I'm going to be dotting this with 3, 1, 2, integrate with respect to t. All right, so again, here's the setup. This is really the difficult thing to do. Now that we have this well set up, let's go ahead and compute. So the first thing, let's evaluate out that dot product. So let's see, 4t squared times 3, that's going to be 12t squared. Plus, all right, my second components multiplied together, that's just going to be 1 plus 3t, quantity squared, times 1, of course. And then finally, my last components, t squared times 2, that's just going to be 2t squared. Again, I'm integrating with respect to t. 
All right, I've put off kind of foiling this off, foiling it out long enough. I guess first I could combine this 12 and this 2 to make 14 t squareds. And now let's go ahead and foil this out. So the firsts, the inners, that's going to be 3t. The outers are going to be another 3t. And the lasts, that's going to be 3t times 3t, that's going to be 9t squared. So we're integrating from 0 to 1. All the uh, t squared terms, that's going to be 23t squared plus 6t plus 1. Now we're finally ready to integrate. So let's see, 23 divided by 3, I don't think that's anything nice. Let's see, okay, 6 divided by 2, that'll be 3t squared. And I integrate 1, I get t. And again, I'm going from 0 to 1. When I plug in 0, I would just get out 0. When I plug in 1, I'm going to get 23 thirds plus 3. I'll go ahead and write 3 as 9 thirds plus 1, which I'll go ahead and write as 3 thirds. So let's go ahead and add this all up. So 23 plus 9, that's going to be 32, plus another 3, that's going to be 35 thirds. So altogether, I get the result of 35 thirds. All right, so there's a good 16.2 problem for you. I hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you next time in 16.3.